All right, everyone, welcome back into another props video. Give me a touch on the top prop bets that we have available on both Prize Picks and Underdog today, with an emphasis on the two NBA games that we have. We'll also touch on the other sports as well. Uh, but first, as always, let's go and get into a quick recap of yesterday. Yesterday was a bit of a doozy. Let's touch on it. And yesterday was by far the worst day ever picks wise on the channel. 0 for 6. I've never went 0 for 6 for you guys over the past year that I've been doing this. Uh, it's just crazy. It's almost laughable. I'm like, how in the heck is Vegas giving us four and a rebounds for a guy that didn't get zero it's super frustrating when something like that happens and i know college basketball is a little bit more difficult to predict and i know that that's kind of the awesome part about it is that um when vegas is more right than let's say um prize based underdog it you're typically cashing a lot more and vice versa. I mean, it definitely goes both ways. And I, I, we saw that, yes, where prize picks was a little bit sharper than Vegas. That's going to happen. This one sucked. He got injured. Uh, and then, yeah, just none of the EV bets hit yesterday uh, for the bet of the day slip. We know it's going to happen. Again, I kind of mentioned that on Monday that I wouldn't be shocked if we have kind of a regression back to the mean. That's exactly what happened in this slate. But I always say, you know, the best times to watch the channel or the best times to get excited are literally days after this because, well, now it's going to regress back the other way, expecting some positive. And then this was the other one as well. I felt so good about the Brooklyn Nets props that we were getting because these were big advantages. I mentioned to you guys I had Cam Thomas at 23 points, rebounds, and assists to start the day. This got bumped up to like 26. Oh, super tilting. And yeah, Jaron Jackson Jr. only gained six and a half rebounds. That was very tilting as well that one got bumped to seven like all in all i felt super good about yesterday because of the edges we got and that's the last two days where very big edges gained just didn't work out and i know by now most of you guys kind of get how it works again though like typically the best days are going to be those days in which you're coming in off of a bad day like it's just kind of how it worked but yeah that brooklyn game being like 30 points under the game total that was that was a little brutal but looking at nba today we have two games and we got a very high pace of spot and we have seen so many high game totals thus far this season. I believe this is the highest ever. I could be wrong. Um, I know it was the Hawks Pacers earlier this year that also had a very high game total. The Bucks just had a very high scoring game. Uh, the Pacers always, you know, pace up spot for teams. The Bucks are five point favorites. You know, I do think that there's a chance for a blowout. Uh, the Pacers are playing well. Don't get me wrong. It's basically like uh, it's like the Timberwolves in the elimination game or sorry the playing game this is kind of their nba championship it seems like this play uh this in-season tournament uh, but yeah i game total we take a peek at the injury report uh still pat kind and jay crowder out again that's going to mean that malik beasley is still going to step up into that higher increased minutes and also usage uh looking at jalen smith being out we don't exactly know what that means for sure but that is a lot of minutes that are going to be available for some of the bigs as well and so we go ahead and take a peek at the current props that we are getting here we see dame lillard for over 4.5 rebounds which is definitely an interesting one only projected at 3.8 we look at it, that as what he averages on the season though and so it, it's kind of an interesting one given the fact that this is supposed to be a higher scoring game you know there's just gonna be a lot more shot attempts a lot more volume going up and so with that i would assume that he should be able to get the over there now it could be tight obviously not one that you typically want to chase again we want to be chasing profits out of a 54 percent likely to hit uh that is going to yield us success in the long term now i know that didn't work out yesterday but that's just part of the the nature of the beast uh looking at malik beasley for under 4.5 rebounds i don't really want to touch that chris middleton's threes is definitely interesting to me i think this is actually a better bet i'm on the sports books to bet the over 1.5 they're favoring the under a decent amount and i do wonder are we gonna see middleton getting around 27 or so minutes that is the biggest difference in him as a bet now he hasn't exactly been shooting a lot of three balls recently and that's probably why we are getting that line but when he is shooting the three ball they're they're pretty much open looks for him. And you kind of expect Chris Middleton to be able to hit those open looks. Uh, that's kind of the nice thing for the Bucs is that they haven't really needed him to shoot a lot of three balls. He's been super efficient as a scorer. You know, I was in on his points and rebounds the last game. I don't. I think that's a little bit too high for him today. And the data is kind of suggesting that as well. They really bumped this up because of the high pace game that we're going to have. So with that, I don't know if I want to be really chasing that with middle but we continue on we got malik beasley for under points rebounds and assists which is also a fascinating one to me because beasley has been crushing and again it's no shock that he has been this is one that i've been you know mentioned in passing a bunch it's because jay crowder and pat connington are out it's a direct correlation and it's also he's shooting the basketball well during the stretch as well like don't get me wrong i'm pretty sure he has like the best three ball percentage in the league right now or something like that like among uh players that have shot at least like 100 three balls or something like that he's playing well but the thing is he's playing heavy minutes 
minutes. And again, if this game is going to be close, I think we're going to expect 39-ish minutes. This is a game that they clearly want to win. And I just, I feel like the line that we're getting on them is just simply too low, given the pace of spot. Again, I hate that this is a prop bet. I'm one of the sports books. And what I mean by that is like, you'd be better off betting the over there than you are using it on prize picks because we have a 53% likelihood for the under to hit. Like that is terrible. We don't want to chase those odds. And so this, this is the frustrating part, guys, about yesterday, because like, if I would have recommended this bet on prize picks yesterday, I'd have been like, like, okay, that's on me. That's my fault. You know, like uh, I, I messed up. Like Nick Clax is a good example of that. The data heavily favored the under fantasy score. That uh, was the best bet that we had available on the whole day. He didn't even get close to it. I should have recommended that to you guys. That's on me. Um, that's where yesterday was frustrating. And like, this is where I do really like the over. It seems like a mistake. But again, playing on DraftKings or if you bet on DraftKings, FanDuel, bet MGM, any of those other sites, this would be a good over bet, I think. Just given the high pace of spot, it doesn't make sense. I don't think the data has really caught up on Malik Beasley just yet. And like, that's a spot where I'd be favoring the over. I really would be. So it's weird. Uh, Giannis is one that's a pretty solid prop, but I want to point out that he has been getting some more assists lately. And so if that continues, that's that's obviously going to be awesome. Now, his rebounds started the day at 11.5. Uh, it has since been bumped up to 12, I believe. Or maybe it started at 12 and a half, bumped up to 13. Either way, my point is that he has a very high point total and rebound total on the day if he continues with this high assist total that he has been on, then he should be able to really crush the over points, rebounds, and assists, especially in this matchup. And now earlier, these two teams did meet, which was a blowout, but Giannis, or sorry, no, it wasn't a blowout. It was a very close game, very high scoring game. Giannis went off in that game. And that's kind of my expectation is that Giannis is going to go off again in this match. And so, yeah, here's his points and rebounds. We can see it's set at 45 on prize picks right now slight edge uh the average sportsbook line would have set at 45.5 again chris Middleton's points and rebounds probably a little bit too high i do want to take a peek at maybe brooke lopez damian lillard as well for their points and rebounds because to me in this matchup i would think brooke lopez would be able to get this over um all in all though like i'm not too worried about the miles turner defense at all i i think brooke should have a good game probably a little bit too thin to chase and then damian lillard again in a pace of spot and i know the last two games have been pace of spots for them don't get me wrong there um I think that this has a decent chance to get in the over, but again, like Giannis has just been crushing. So I think that that is something that's probably just going to continue. And I think that'd be the best bet. Both him and Beasley, I, I would say, make for the best over points and rebounds. But again, caution against Beasley, just better prop bet. I'm on the sports. Now we go and take a peek at the Pacers. Again, very tight in terms of the prop bets that we are currently getting. Like maybe Obi Toppin for over points and assists. He is someone that you would think would get a lot of minutes in this game with Jalen Smith still out, especially considering the matchup with the Bucks, where you got Giannis, you got Brooke, you got Bobby Portis, you know, you got a few bigs there. They're going to need another big presence in there. Now, the issue that I have with him is that we have no idea how many minutes he's going to play against Boston. Kind of a similar situation. I would have thought that he would have gotten some minute. You know, going against Tatum, going against Al Horford, and maybe that was just it. They didn't have Porzingis there. That could be, but against Miami the last two times, 35 and 33 minutes. That might have just been a matchup thing. Tough to say for sure. It's not like he shot the basketball poorly in the last game. And all in all, he, he still was very close to getting that over. So if he does get a few more minutes here, he should be able to get that over. Maybe a little bit too thin, but all in all, I think, you know, if you bet on the minutes being there, I don't mind that. But again, he could also get into foul trouble. We see Miles Turner for under 8.5 rebounds, a decent one. I don't know if I want to touch Miles Turner. Uh, looking at Aaron Naismith for over his points, rebounds, and assists. Actually, the under is being favored here. And I kind of find that fascinating. It's like you're either betting on Obi Toppin to get the minutes or you're betting on Aaron Naismith to get the minutes. One of those two. And what's interesting is if Aaron Naismith does not get those minutes, he the under should really not have that much difficulty to hit. And so I would say those two do have some slight correlation. Like if you're betting Obi for the over, you'd be betting the under here. I think I think that makes a lot of sense. Uh, from there, I'll be topping again. Points, rebounds, and assists. That's just minutes. But Benedict Matherin is definitely an interesting play. Matherin is someone that we know is going to get right around 25 minutes. Is going to shoot the basketball a lot. Like he has been shooting the basketball at least 10 times. And so you got, got a guy shooting the basketball at least 10 times or so in this high scoring game, right? You, you'd maybe expect him to get a few more shot attempts up. Maybe he makes a couple of threes again. If he can get to, let's say, 10 points to what, 50%, that's not including if he makes some threes or any free throws. Attack on a couple of assists. He's like right there. Again, it's a high scoring game. Like I probably would be more interested in his points and rebounds at 19.5 because he gets a few more rebounds again at pace up spot you kind of expect that but all in all you guys are kind of seeing how thin of a board it is today uh, in terms of the props that we are getting now let's take a peek at bruce brown and also tyrese halburn in terms of points rebounds and assists we can see both basically a 50 50 percent chance for the overs to hit at their points rebounds and assists but let's take a peek at it do want to point out that the average sportsbook line 
is starting to favor maybe 45 for Tyrese Halliburton. So Bruce Brown is someone that's been playing pretty well over the last three games. That is rooted in a few things. I mean, he's been getting heavy minutes, but he's been shooting the basketball a decent amount, uh, you know, around 10 times per game. Got a lot of rebounds in the last game. Got a lot of assists in the last game. Again, with it being a higher pace up spot think it's almost safe to assume that that's going to continue again but all in all like maybe slightly too thin for bruce brown to get over his points rebounds and assists and then for halliburton to me when i was looking at this i'm like if they keep this game closed it's going to be because halliburton is having another really awesome game and so that's like a bet you can make maybe game scripted a little bit there now yes these two teams did meet earlier on in the season do want to point out that lillard was out in that game okay so that's part of the reason as to why Giannis really went off i mean that just makes sense that makes a ton of sense so we're not going to have the biggest idea of what to expect in this game obi toppin did start in that game got four fouls so didn't get that many minutes again that makes sense bruce brown did have a pretty good game nine rebounds seven assists 11 points you know points rebounds and assists you would expect him to get there miles turner also had a pretty good game a little bit shocking there halliburn you know did go off Matherin had himself a good game as well and so that's kind of my long way of saying that one we don't know what to expect you, you, you would think Alburn against the Lillard like that shouldn't matter like he should be able to go off but I think we could kind of blindly stack maybe Matherin over Giannis over Halliburton over you could potentially do Bruce Brown I, I think I'd be fine with that and then I'd also probably want to roll with Malik Beasley for his over points rebounds and assists I don't know if I want to get there with Miles Turner uh, that, that just worries me a little bit so now we go ahead and move on into the late night game we got the Pels versus the Lakers this is going to be a 237 for the over and under about a two-point spread uh looking at it right now injury wise I think we're expecting everyone to play I mean for the Lakers at least Pelicans Nance is out I still think we're gonna see Jay Val get some heavy minutes in this game he has been a source of profitability with the prop lines that we have been getting on him because they haven't really adjusted for him getting around 30 minutes which has been nice let's go and start out with the Lakers here right now we're just not getting that many you know good EV bets it makes sense guys it's a two-game slate books and prize picks well prize picks and underdog can correct the books lines that they're getting faster and easier so we're probably not going to get that many good EV it's just going to happen we can examine the ones that we are getting that might potentially be good like Russell for over 1.5 turnovers I think this would just be rooted in him not getting as many minutes and you know, when he's on the court with LeBron, he's just not going to have that high of a usage rate. Austin Reeves has been having a pretty high usage rate as well when he has been on the court, but you know, his minutes haven't been exactly scorching high as well. But that's just the thing. Like LeBron clearly is motivated by money with this one. Played 40 minutes in the last game against Phoenix. That game almost went to OT. Then you're also seeing AD played 39 minutes as well. Like those who are just playing all the time, soaking up a lot of usage. And so you don't need someone like Russell handling the basketball as much. And I would say that should be a concern for some people when you want to bet any other prop bets for any of those guys. So uh, looking at Anthony Davis, we can see 12 and a half rebounds to 2.5 cis and we see points is at 26 let's just take a peek at all those and so for me i probably would be fine betting the over rebounds like if he is going to be playing that much tack on a couple more minutes to his average that should be another rebound so over 12.5 rebounds i don't mind and probably a little bit too thin a little bit concerning there like to me the the bet i think would be the best would be anthony davis for over 39.5 points and rebounds now yes they are bumping it up like if you add on his points and add on his rebounds it should actually be set at 39 they're giving it an extra half but all in all like i would say that's probably the better bet still even though the data doesn't think so and we can see underdog has that bad boy set at 40.5 you could potentially bet the under there i mean that's a big difference one it might not seem like much but that is a big difference but all in all I think AD over 12 and a half rebounds, AD over his 26.5 points. I kind of like both of those. If he's going to continue to get those heavy minutes, that is. And I think we're expecting. Uh, and then taking a peek at LeBron's props that we are getting eight rebounds. We can see the average sportsbook line would kind of have it set at 7.7 and not really be favoring the over too much. So it's interesting that that has been bumped to eight. Uh, LeBron rebounds and or points and assists at 35.5. Points and rebounds at 36.5. And then points, rebounds, and assists at 43.5. Let's just take a peek at that. So yes, he's been getting heavy heavy minutes you kind of expect that to continue especially considering that this game is projected to stay close I would expect him to be as involved as he was last game now last game kind of a little bit of a I shouldn't say a little bit a much better matchup in terms of production for him and AD but all in all I probably would be favoring the overs for him again in this game but again a little bit too thin odds then we go and take a peek at the Pelicans I feel like these are going to be where we are getting maybe our best prop lines uh let's see Herbert Jones we can see points over 10 is kind of being favored there about a 53.6 percent chance that's literally like the best bet that we currently have available on the slate today he is someone that has been playing heavy minutes has been getting 
you know, some shot attempts up, especially in that last game against the Kings. That is going to be encouraging, but we can see, look at this game log, guys. Uh, you know, 30 minutes in the last five, over 10 points in all those and he's consistently been been kind of crushing so we do worry about the efficiency dropping off but all in all the data likes and so i i think we kind of just we're searching for bets nba wise this is the one that we're probably looking uh from there ingram under 1.53s is interesting uh jvel under rebounds i don't really get and then brandon ingram for under points and rebound or over points and rebounds let's just take a peek at those so jvel is someone that is playing a lot okay i just want to point that out 29 minutes in the last game against the kings did fall out i think we would have expected him to get over 30 plus minutes again larry nance is out i think that's just gonna mean j val is gonna get a ton of minutes again and he got the over rebounds there and you tack on a couple more minutes i just think that this is a great spot for him whether you want to do points and rebounds and actually let's take a peek at those like points rebounds and assists i'd actually be fine with he's been crushing uh points and rebounds i, I probably like a little bit more because we can't always bank on him getting assists and so points and rebounds i probably like the most because we're betting on the minutes being there and if they are against ad he should be able to get this over that to me is probably one of my favorite bets i'm actually curious what is the line that we are getting on that for him 51 percent chance that i again it's a thin slate i think i'm fine rolling with that one again a better bet to use on a sports ingram let's take a peek at points and rebounds he is someone in the last slate surprisingly crushed his like over points to start the day was set at 20.5 and i got bumped up to 22 and yes definitely got high minutes in that game you expect him to get high minutes again this game probably expect him to get around 20 shot attempts again i i, I think we can expect that so all in all his points and rebounds being set at 28.5 i'm probably okay with that over as well like i think the pelicans are going to present us more uh predictability here trey murphy we're, we're getting a bunch of interesting lines for him he is someone that has come back over the last two games and first game back played 22 minutes next last game 30 minutes and if that's something that's going to continue if he plays 30 minutes in this game to me the lines that we are getting on him are all probably a little bit too low now 13.5 points is kind of crazy but he's been doing it you know 13 shot attempts i think we're okay with that I, i'd probably okay with the points and rebounds there so again to me it makes more sense to bet on the pelicans on this one what's interesting is i don't know what to expect from zion in this game had kind of a poor game in the last game and that's just been zion he's had a few spike really good games and that's also come when one of the players were out to me maybe Maybe, maybe it's the one that doesn't benefit from those players being back. And so CJ McCollum, I also do like um, as a player, probably a good fantasy score prop bet. I mean, he has been getting a lot of stocks there, guys. Like he's just been dominating. And so not getting that many turnovers as well. Might not get the most points. He's going to get some assists. And so he's someone when or if we get fantasy score props, I probably like his over. Uh, right now, his assist is one that to me is popping up. Again, we'll take a peek here. It's probably going to be a better bet. I'm on the sports books. Yeah, it's fair in the under here. <laughs> I hate that. I think that's a, a decent bet. So it's definitely a weird day in that sense that some of my favorite prop bets are going to be better bets, just not on prize picks. We'll take a quick peek at underdog, seeing if there's any better lines over there. And and seemingly we're going to get the exact same props that we were getting there as bets to roll with right now so again like this is not my bad the day for price picks. just want to make that clear but to me these are the best bets that we are currently getting for the day in nba and so again not a good prize picks underdog slip right now just want to make that clear i would say if you like any of these prop bets go ahead and use them on DraftKings or FanDuel if that is available for you guys if it's not I would say don't force it on uh, prize picks or underdog if you're in a state that you can only play in one of those sites don't force it I this is how I see the day again odds wise not a good slip uh, odds wise really a bad slip so with that let's try to give you guys a good slip so I want to start with NFL here uh NFL wise we're not getting any Zeke props for his receptions I will say Hunter Henry's prop for receptions is interesting to me my favorite one right now they bumped it a little bit it's actually it was Zeke at over 15.5 for receiving yards I would still probably be favoring the over here guys uh let me take a peek at underdog we are still getting that there so I, I'd be fine Ben the over for Zeke there I think prize picks bumped it because of volume and then looking at Devontae Parker uh, he is someone that's going to need to get involved. Like, I really kind of like all these. I find it funny that they're giving us this rush plus receiving yards one. I'm like, are they thinking that he has a chance to go negative? Like, maybe they try a stupid end around, or maybe there's a behind the line of scrimmage pass where he gets negative yards, like rushing then. I found that interesting. All in all, though, I think he has a great chance to get three receptions in this game simply because Demario Douglas is out, unfortunate. And then one of the better EV bets that we are currently getting is actually Deontay Johnson for under 4.5 reception. And I'll show you guys those here. <laughs> and a lot of the under fantasy scores are being favored there. I don't know about that. Um, it does make sense, though. I mean, this is supposed to be an ugly game. I mentioned 
the profits that I want to be betting are actually going to be like the uh, defense ones if we get that for prize picks, like the over fantasy score there. Uh, but looking at right now, guys, um, yeah, Deontay Johnson in this game is going to be the best one. And let's just sort it by today's props. Uh, Chris Boswell for field goals made is a good one that's popping up there. I think it's worth calling out that the data doesn't like Hunter Henry for over 2.5 receptions. So probably just stay away there. Data doesn't like Devontae Parker for over his receiving yards. I, I'm saying that that's probably wrong. But all in all, like maybe, maybe you don't make that bet because of that. And then just showing you guys the Devontae Parker receptions. Yeah, this one has a decent chance to get over three. So a good one there. We are seemingly getting some edges, it would appear, on underdog. Let's try to find Zeke here for receiving yards. And the data doesn't really like it for the over now. Again, the, the only way that this doesn't get there is if we see a lot more Ty Montgomery and also Jermichael Hasty, which we could, don't get me wrong. Uh, but he played 92% of the snaps when Stevenson left the game. And I kind of expect him to get a lion's share of the workload again, maybe 85% of the snaps. And to me, that'd be the only way in which he doesn't and hit that because you're just combining the production and the receiving game from Stevenson and Zeke into one player now and that should mean that this over hit and then just trying to show you guys some profits that uh, we might have in NFL on prize picks uh, for today we're not really getting any good ones just yet so just want to point that out getting to college basketball real quick see if we got any edges there I don't think we're really yeah we got really one game I think there's like two games the projection data was pulling in for the day so yeah we're going to be a tight slate right now we do have Patrick Caffrey for under 4.5 rebounds and then Pay Peyton for over 5.5 rebounds. This is really the only good one, I guess, for un or for prize fish purposes. We can make that prop bet. It's seemingly going to be a good one. We also have that available then on underdog as well. Then underdog wise, you know, again, kind of a tighter slip in general. So guys, getting into the bed of the day on both slates. Again, I really... The only reason I'm giving you guys a bet of the day on prize picks is because I know a lot of people are coming in here for a prize pick slip. This is really the best bet that we can currently make. Uh, checking the NHL uh, part of the cheat sheet. This was the best NHL prop bet that, that was out there. Um, has a high likelihood for the under to hit. But then we're taking the really one good EV bet that we currently have on the slate today. And then this one as well. Like I don't love this one only has about a 53 like point. I think it was like 8% chance that. So if you round up 54% chance, very tight. Don't like this. And the fact that it's a three slip bet, I also so hate like a much better bet on underdog. I want to make that clear. But when we compare this slip to underdog, we are definitely getting a better edge on underdog. So that is going to be where we want to make our prop bets. Uh, first, if you guys do end up wanting to place bets on underdog and you guys haven't done it before, just use the promo code nine to five. When you do that, that's going to kick back some money my way just a, a way to help the channel out without really having to do too much while pretty much helping yourself out as well so with this one for underdog we are taking the two or the three really good ev bets that we have right here these three all have a 54 percent chance to hit or more someone uh, on yesterday's nfl video asked uh chris boswell over 1.5 field goals that's a lock right and i'm like i don't like to use the lock word guys uh but seemingly right like that should be a really good prop bet uh and then Devonte parker the issue I have with that probably has a really good chance to be a push, uh, but all in all with pop Douglas out, he's going to get a ton of snaps. He's going to need to get those receptions. Uh, and then Zeke as well. I really think that this is too low, but the fact that the sports books are agreeing with this low line, that's a little bit concerning. Hopefully we're right here on all prize picks bumps it up to 16 and a half. One of them is going to be wrong, right? But that is going to be it for today's video. Again, a little bit too tight, uh, hoping that we get some fancy score props specifically for NBA. I think that could be a good edge. And then also for uh, DST on prize picks. I want to get that as well. Uh, if you guys enjoyed this video, make sure to give a like and subscribe. If you guys want access to the prize picks and underdog cheat sheet, head on over to 95sports.com. It is available for just $10 a month. That is going to be all for today's video, guys. Thanks for watching. And as always, let's keep cashing.